Hi everyone and welcome to video number 14 on the rise of the Nazi party. And this video, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be looking at the years 1929 to 1932. And we're going to be looking at some of the problems that Germany began to face in those years. Now, if you remember the previous video, I was looking at how Hitler had tried to reorganize the Nazi party years 1924 to 1928. And I said that he had done many uh, reorganizational methods, new measures that he had introduced. But if you remember the 1928 election, the Nazi party did very poorly. It was only the seventh largest party in the Reichstag, the German parliament, and the Nazis received under 3% of the whole vote. So therefore, something needed to change to propel Hitler forward, to move him up towards power. And this video, hopefully, will show you what began to change. And the key year, which starts it all off, 1929. And the key month, October. October 1929. Now, what happened? Well, at the start of October, 3rd of October, Gustav Stresemann died. Now, if you remember, he was a very successful politician. He was a very able man, Gustav Stresemann. He was a straight A's man. Gustav Stresemann, straight A's man. He was a top man. If you think back or check back, have a look at some of the previous videos, videos six and video seven, I was talking about and showing you Stresemann's successes, economic recovery, political recovery. So because of his work, remember the years 1924 to 29, some people refer to that as the golden years for Weimar Germany and consequently, they were the lean years for the Nazi party. Remember this from the previous video. When Germany was doing well, Hitler did badly. But 1929, October, things begin to turn. So first of all, at the start of October, Stresemann dies. And then towards the end of October, October the 24th, 1929. Let's move stateside. Let's head off to the US of A. Hi, everyone. Now, over in America, on the 24th of October, known as Black Thursday, we get the start of what is known as Wall Street Crash. The American stock market, people used to buy and sell shares in businesses, and they'd done very well for many, many years. But then, October 1929, we get the crash. People started to sell. The price went down. People were losing millions and millions of US dollars. America was heading for bankruptcy. America is the richest country in the world. And it was all going wrong in America. Well, what's that got to do with Germany? Can you remember? Gustav Stresemann's recovery. What was it based on? Well done, if you've remembered. The Dawes plan, the Young plan, loans from American banks had helped the German economy recover. But now all of a sudden, the American banks were short of money. What would they do? Well, the first thing they would do is stop giving loans to Germany because they didn't have the money to loan out anymore. So that's the first thing. But then things get even worse for Germany because the American banks say to the German banks, start to repay us the loans. So then the German banks would have to say, right, we need to repay now. But the German banks had already loaned their money out to German businesses and German factories. So the German banks have to go to the German businesses to say, give us that money back because we have to pay America. But if the German businesses and factories repay the money, 
then they haven't got as much money to invest. So their production will fall or the banks, uh, sorry, the factories, the businesses will close. So then German people will be out of work. So Wall Street crash had a massive impact, a terrible negative impact on Germany. A couple of figures to prove that for you. Between 1929 and 1931, a 40% fall in industrial output in Germany. German factories, German businesses are making much less stuff. But if they're making less stuff, there's less to sell. And if there's less to sell, they're not getting the profit. So then they might lay people off work. So people will be unemployed. So they won't have any money to go out and buy stuff. So then the factories will not make as much. So they'll put more people out of work. It's a downward spiral. Things were getting very, very messy in Germany, 1929. And it all came from America. Wall Street crash. So there's your first problem. The problems in America. Leads to the second problem. I've already hinted at it. Unemployment. People in Germany lost their jobs. September 1929, there was 1.3 million Germans out of work. September 1931, two years later, that had gone up to 4.3 million. September 1932, another year later, it had gone up again to 5.1 million. And finally, January 1933, 6.1 million German people were out of work. 40% of all factory workers unemployed. 50% of 16 to 30 year olds, the young people unemployed. 60% of all graduates, university graduates unemployed. Their lives have become a mess. And why? Because they've got no work because of the problems in America. Well, what would that lead to? That led to the third major problem. The economy in Germany collapsed. Germany went into recession. It was a depression. Things were terrible. What was the impact on people about that? Well, let's get the hat off. Now, remember it's all about money. Well, some people, remember they'd done well, 1924 to 1929, golden years. Some people had done well. So they had got savings. Some people had invested their money, invested their savings in shares. But the price of shares has fallen. So they've lost all of their life savings. They've lost it. How would they feel? What about if you were one of the people who'd lost their job? You'd become unemployed. Well, you haven't got any money because you're not working anymore. So you've got no wages. But then you think, oh, at least I've got unemployment benefits. But as we'll see later in the video, the German government cut the unemployment benefits. So again, they will not be very pleased. What about those people lucky enough still to have a job? The workers. You think, oh, at least I'm working. Yes. But the German government put up their taxes because they needed the taxes to help pay all the unemployed people. And there's fewer people working to pay the taxes. So those people who are still working have to pay higher taxes. So they're not doing very well. Also, if you've got loads of people unemployed and all of a sudden a job comes up. Imagine if I want to work and there's only me for the job. I could say to the boss offering the job, give me a uh, £100. Otherwise I won't work because there's only me able to do that job. 
But imagine if there's 10 of us all applying for the same job. And I say, oh, give me that job. I demand £100. But the person behind me in the queue will say, boss, I'll do it for 90 I'll do it for 80 So the actual wages would go down. So yes, they're still working, but they're not getting as much money. So how would they feel? Particularly if the prices of things begin to rise. 1932, those people still working, their real wages, how much they actually bought, had fallen by 70% compared to 1928. The actual wages and what they would buy in the shop had gone down 70%. So they're not happy. Many of the unemployed couldn't afford rent, so they're living on the streets. They're homeless. Homelessness increases. They're bored. They're desperate. Crime, violent crime, it's all increasing. 24% increase in theft in Berlin. Things are going very, very wrong in Germany. America, the jobs, the economy. There's three big problems that we've identified so far. Things are a mess. People are becoming desperate. Well, surely the government needs to step forward to help. And they did. Remember, though, Gustav Stresemann, straight A's man, he's sadly gone. So the replacements are not as good as he was. The first one to have a go, Chancellor Muller, he's in coalition. Remember the Weimar government was often coalition between different parties. Muller argued with Brüning about the way forward, what to do to help the people. So Muller, in March 1930, Muller resigned, leaving Brüning in charge, Chancellor Brüning. Now, he has got some ideas. What were Bruning's ideas? We could argue, fair enough, he wanted to balance the books, income and outgoings. He wanted to balance it. He remembered 1923, hyperinflation, when the German government had printed money. So that wasn't the answer. So he said, right, what I'm going to do to balance the books is I'm going to reduce spending and I'm going to raise taxes. Remember what I said about the workers paying more taxes. This is why, because Bruning, the Chancellor, decided it was the right thing to do to sort out the economy. But the Reichstag, the Parliament, did not agree with Bruning and blocked it and said, no, that's not right. We need to find a different way forward. But Bruning, he knows the constitution of Weimar. Check it out in one of my earlier videos. The constitution of the Weimar Republic said, in emergencies, the chancellor can go to the president, article 48, and force through laws using emergency powers. And that's what Bruning decides to do. He uses article 48, emergency powers, to force through his new measures. Now, in 1930, Bruning uses emergency measures five times. In 1931, Bruning uses emergency measures 44 times. In 1932, just before he resigns, Bruning uses emergency measures 66 times overriding the Reichstag, which hardly met in the end. What's happening to government in Germany? The parliament being ignored by emergency powers. It's almost as if one man is taking over, Bruning. So using these emergency powers, he brings through other measures. Higher taxes on beer, sugar, foreign food. Would that be popular? No, he's trying to protect German food, but in the end, the prices of all food begins to rise. And remember, wages aren't rising with them. 
So even people in work aren't well off. The civil servants working for the government, December 1931. By then they've had a 23% pay cut. So they're not happy. Those people who are unemployed, they've had a 60% cut in their unemployment benefit. Wow, things are not going well in Germany. 1929, 1930, 1931, 1932. Things are going badly. There's been four main problems. You know I like to help you to remember. It's all been about money, hasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? So that should help you remember the four main problems that Germany faced. It's all to do with wage, earnings, money, W, work. By the end of the period, six million Germans are unemployed. They have no wage. It starts in America. The Wall Street crash. It's become chaotic. Very, very bad impact from America onto Germany. There's a very famous saying that if America sneezes, the rest of the world catches a cold because America is so important economically. Well, America's not sneezing here. America's getting a terrible, terrible dose of the flu. And that caused huge problems, particularly for Germany, which was so dependent on America. Dawes plan, Young plan, American loans from banks. A, America. The third problem was the government. Bruning's government introduced measures you could argue which made people very, very angry, very upset. It made their lives miserable because of the economy. Money, jobs, prices, chaos, homelessness, crime, everything has gone wrong. The four problems, Germany, 1929 to 1932. Well, ladies and gentlemen, remember this. When things were going well for Germany, things were going badly for Hitler. But as I've tried to show you today, things began to go bad for Germany. The four main problems. How would things then go for Adolf Hitler? When there are problems, many people lost faith with the Weimar government and they're looking around for answers. Their lives are terrible. They want a better life. They want some answers. They're angry. They're full of rage. They're full of despair. They want some hope. Now, some people, some Germans, look left. They look to the left wing, to the Communist Party, the KPD, which began to get a rise in support. Other Germans said, no, that's not the answer. Other Germans reached right. They turned to the right wing, to the Nazi Party, and the Nazi Party begins to get a rise in support. Was Hitler ready for this? Remember the previous video? Yes, he was. He's got all of his party organized. He just needed something to kickstart it. Well, 1929 gave him the impetus. So Hitler is ready. People are beginning to look to him for answers. What will he do? Is he ready for things? To go his way and for the answer to that ladies and gentlemen please watch the next video as ever i hope it's been useful speak to you soon all the best now